Hello friends and beautiful people. It is Catherine, CatherineMassell.com. Mm -mm -mm. Teacher of Lotus Throne Initiation. Teacher of Transpersonal Ascension Attunement coming up next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. Teacher and facilitator of Momentum of Flow, six month coaching experience starting December 5th. Lots of stuff happening, lots of stuff happening. Hello, today I am going to talk about the Platinum Standard, your Platinum Standard, and what that is and what it looks like in your life. So this is really a talk geared towards spirit-led visionary women in their life and business. And if you are hitting the skids right now with your business and maybe the inspiration you feel in your business and feeling like you have to strategize and do all the things and, and be clever and you know, figure out how to reformulate things and share it in a way where it seems new and exciting and fresh, then I am talking to you. I am speaking to you directly. So let's see, I'm gonna share this. Um, in a couple places. I don't know if I can do that. So I'm gonna share in my group. But if you're here, say hello. And if you're gonna watch later on, or you are watching later on in the replay, I'm speaking to you in the future and throw in hashtag replay. Let me know where you're watching from and uh, what it's like today, where you are. Let's see, I'm gonna share this in one other, a couple other places. Mm -hmm. So your platinum standard. I wanna, before I give the full on definition of it, I really wanna share kind of the backstory of why this is even a thing, why it's an important thing to embrace, to embrace right now and to, to cultivate. Because as we are moving into the new earth paradigm more and more rapidly, accelerating timelines leading us into a paradigm of doing life quite differently, this is, of course, how can it not? It is affecting our business as well. It is changing the way we look at how we share what we share, what we do and how we do it and what that means for, there it is. Don't know why that didn't show up immediately. Oh, face place. So, and what that means for us, what it looks like going forward we are being invited to slow everything down. We're being invited to really savor and deepen into the presence of what is going on, of what is happening. And we can't really accept what is and flow into the present moment of what is happening. Before we place judgment on it, before we you know, have a value statement about this moment is good or this moment is bad, we have to be able to sit with it first. Because if we're not doing that, then we're making these off the cuff, um, you know, very snap decisions and judgments about the nature of things that may actually not reflect the truth of reality or the truth of what's really going on. And to be quite honest, this is what we are habituated to. This is what we do quite often. So when we're really able to be in the moment and savor what is happening, be with what is going on, deepen into presence. Only from this place can we give an honest and true assessment of our relationship with whatever this moment is and with whatever is presented to us in this moment. Makes sense, right? But as we ramp up the energies in this rapidly closing out timeline of 2022, which is inviting us to do 
a pretty broad life review of the last three years, honestly, of 2020, 2021, and 2022 all together. It's this culminating timeline that's all kind of wrapping up at the end of 2022. We're going through all the feels. We are doing a, you know, a, a cataloging and a daily kind of inventory of all the things we've felt over the last three years. And, and to be honest, even before that, and we're wrapping up timelines within timelines. Lots of bubbles of experience are coming up to the surface for our review, for our assessment. And if we don't have the wherewithal and the real exercise of willpower to say, all right, I need to take a pause. There's a correct use of willpower, and that is in taking yourself out of what's going on, being the objective observer and being a divine witness of what's going on. This is the right use of willpower. We talked about this yesterday in my Tao of the Divine Disruptor group when we were finishing out the Living Intuitively program, that the right exercise or the right use of willpower is our ability to be able to take ourselves out of whatever consciousness loop we're in, whatever moment we feel spun out in, uh, whatever happens to be happening, and just say, whoa, pump the brakes, taking a pause, taking a breath. And the second you initiate that, not only do you move whoop, right back into your power, but then and only then are you able to give a powerful assessment, create a powerful assessment of what's really going on, of what's really happening. And as we ramp up these timelines and all the feels are coming up, all these bubbles of experience are coming up, we feel like we have to tackle each one. We have to, you know, be with each thing and juggle all of these emotions and juggle all of these um, tasks. And the minutia of it all is creating nervous system burnout, but it's also creating the situation where we feel that we are undone by the multitude of all the things that are, you know, pulling at our attention in the moment. We don't have to tackle all those things. We just think we do because we end up going into the ego version of self. This is not your divine witness aspect of you. This is not your higher self. This is not your compassionate higher self observer that allows you to see what's really going on, okay? It's, it's a ghost of you, a phantom of you, that ego version of self that says, oh my God, I'm going to explode. <laughs> I gotta do all these things, I gotta pay attention to all this stuff. You don't. Let's let the cat out of the bag right here, the secret hiding in plain sight. You don't have to pay attention to all the stuff. You don't have to do all the things. In fact, what the universe is inviting you to do is see how untenable and how ridiculous the situation is that all these things are happening and we feel like we have to tackle all the things. We don't, and you can't. If you try, you will only dig yourself into a deeper hole that you have to kind of claw yourself out of, and that's not a good feeling. So what do you do in those moments, whether this is happening in your daily life, whether it's happening in your business, or both? What brings you back into your power every single time is to just say, stop, stop. I call it the pause that refreshes. When you pump the brakes on all these things that are grabbing at, clawing at you for, for attention, for your focus, for your energy, for the most valuable resource that you have, which is your energy, all these things, are you willing to let those be the boss of you? Or are you willing to say, you know what? You know what? Stop. Just stop. All the, all the thoughts that are unfriendly to me, all those feelings that are unwholesome to my experience and my nervous system and my immune system, all those worries that I have and preoccupations that take me really far and invest my energy, fund my energy in the future to a place that doesn't exist, is any of this really serving me anyway? Is it helping me? Is it working for me? And the answer we'll come to just about every time is no. So you might think 
And you might be seduced into this thinking that as these timelines accelerate and ramp up, that you have to, that you're obliged to have your energy meet all of these things where they're at. No. The universe is reminding you that you have the power to edit things out that don't really serve you, that aren't wholesome to you, that are not friendly to you, and only pay attention to or fund the things that do actually matter, that do actually drive your life forward in a positive way towards more beneficial and favorable destinies. And that you as a creator have this power to say, I'm gonna pump the brakes on that. I'm gonna unhook myself from this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap out of this consciousness loop and say, you know, Finny, there's no one at the door. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Such a good guard dog. Actually, not really. He'd probably just lick them to death. He's got a mean bark, but once he sees who's at the door, he just wants to lick them to death. Good boy, honey. I didn't mean to scare you. It's okay. You have the power to tap out and say, I'm done. I'm done. I'm only available for X. I'm no longer available for Y. And it's really good to be declarative in those moments about what you are available for more than what you're not available for because let's face it a lot of us are really good at saying no to things and what we and being clear about what we don't want but that's not the end of the conversation ever that's only divesting yourself of what is not working so where do you want to invest your energy to what is working right so you have an opportunity in those moments to be more declarative and say, stop all this. It doesn't really serve me. And when you do that, you have the presence of, of being a divine witness of what's really happening. And you're able to see, you know, this stuff that I thought that was a big bad boogeyman over here, it's not really, it's not all that bad. It doesn't have the power I think it does. It doesn't own me. It doesn't own my time. It doesn't own my energy. It doesn't own my attention. Not anymore. And maybe it is something that you need to attend to, but only in the presence and being in that, you know, higher observer state can you see, well, it's not a priority though. I do have to get to it, but it's not as important as what I'm doing right now. And little by little, we can kind of eliminate the minutia. We can kind of eliminate all the things that are pulling us in a million different directions, keeping us in, you know, untenable states of being unreasonable states of being and we're able to pull our energy back and be in our power and there is a trend that i see not everywhere but there is a trend that i see especially in the world of, of spiritually based business and and the spiritual marketplace in general this kind of feeling that we need to be able to do more. We need to be able to offer more. Um, in all of the courses that we're offering, we have to have beautiful pages and booklets with branding and all of these exercises for people to do. And people will feel like they're really getting their money's worth if, if there's all this stuff. But I don't believe that's true. I actually believe in the idea of less is more and that that is the trajectory and the direction and the invitation even that the new earth energy new earth paradigm energy is is drawing our attention towards this slowing down and this stripping down to bare basics in a way creating a foundation from really simple and elegant fundamentals and when i started doing this in my life so this is my little backstory. And those of you who've heard it many times, I'm sorry. You're going to hear it again. This is a good time to take a, a bio break or get a glass of water. But when I really started to realize that I was in this energy of being spun out and pulled in a million different directions, and that's why it felt like I was throwing just spaghetti at the wall with my business last year, especially at the beginning of 2022, and up through the middle of 2022, actually, of this year, 
feeling like I have to do all the things and if I'm not doing all the things, I can't keep up. How can I be, you know, in a marketplace that is in increasingly saturated with other people doing what I'm doing and ah, I have to do all the things and I have to offer more and I have to do all this growth work and I have to be clever and I have to strategize. And when I got to that place where I was literally hearing my own thoughts as if I was speaking them out loud and I was like, all right, stop right there. Pump the brakes. Because this is the antithesis, the exact opposite of the spectrum of where I want to be at in my business and what I want to share with other people about how to run their, you know, livelihood, their spirit led business in a simple and elegant way. The visionary does not strategize. The visionary is someone who revolutionizes. And I was like, okay, where I'm trying to strategize and be clever is coming from a place within me. I'm dredging this up from a, a deep, a deep dark rabbit hole within me. I feel that I'm still running my business from ego then. Feeling this sense that I, I am competitive or I need to be competitive. That there even is such a thing anyway. There isn't. That's an ego construct. That's old paradigm construct. There is no competition. Not if you're employing the platinum standard. And if you believe that you are competitive with every sister and brother out there also leading their spirit led visionary work, doing their livelihood in the spiritual marketplace, if you feel you're com competing with them, I invite you to, to really hunker down and listen to this reframe. There is no competition. If any competition exists or any comparison exists, it may possibly between, be between who you are today versus who you were yesterday. What you are sharing and teaching today versus what you were sharing and teaching yesterday, last year, a decade ago, five years ago. If any comparison or competition exists, it may be that. But if you are doing your work with integrity, if you are doing your work with authenticity, if you are showing up as the most genuine version of yourself, giving the absolute best of what you've got, regardless of the ticket price that is on what you're offering, you are leading with a sense of true sisterhood, a brotherhood, where we lose this idea of the hierarchy because that promotes competition as well. The hierarchy being the, the, the mentor and the student, the teacher and the pupil, the expert and the novice. We're being invited to lose those definitions because they're old paradigm as well. When we truly share from the highest level of authenticity and integrity, what we know, our, our hard-won wisdom, our gleaned experience, and certainly mine from being um, in this industry, in this spiritual marketplace for over 20 years now, that's what I'm doing. But with a sense of sisterhood, especially sisterhood, where it is more that we are linking arm in arm and teaching each other as we go through programs and courses and classes and master classes with each other versus continuing to pay homage to this old paradigm hierarchy of mentor and student, then if we're doing that, we're really getting what the new earth paradigm is all about. It's more about sisterhood. It's more about brotherhood. It's more about linking arm in arm and walking together, broadening the path so that we can all walk at the same level, linked arm in arm, versus one leading the other. I mean, which one feels better for you? I know which one feels better for me. There are some who love being the expert. I love being the expert too. 
I should say I did love being the expert. But that's softened for me quite a bit. And 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 let's fleece ourselves of the uh, the the weak sounding word of softening. Softening has everything to do with being in stillness, being in presence, being in this divine witness energy, being able to look at things through a different, higher lens or perspective, and being able to take action from there. Softening means understanding there are there's room for many, many different perspectives in the spiritual marketplace. There's room. When we soften, we can see that there's room for many different expressions for people to teach one thing. They're not really ever teaching one thing. They're teaching something through their own unique lens or perspective, which makes it quite different than what someone else is teaching. And it's when we understand that, that we can get into the first part of the platinum standard. First part of the platinum standard is doing what you're brilliant at. Now, when I first introduced this to my Lotus Throne initiation group, this idea of the platinum standard and this first part specifically of doing what you're brilliant at, I felt a collective bristling. <laughs> this kind of feeling like, ooh, well, no pressure at all on that one. But, but here's what, here's what. I want you to soften into this idea. We're all brilliant at something. There would be no need. Just hear me out. From the universe's perspective, from the, the field of the unified mind, the tapestry of one, the field of one, universe, God, source, whatever you want to call it, from that highest on high of all perspectives, from that vantage point, what would be the reason to create all of these unique individuated expressions of consciousness that are human beings? Because we're all different. We're all like snowflakes, right? We're all unique. We all come from different paths of wisdom and experience. We're all looking at the world through our own unique eyes, which have behind it hard-won wisdom, life experience, triumphing over adversity, um, success with certain challenges in life. We're all coming with this unique set of, of, we're all coming from a unique viewpoint of life. A point and a perspective of consciousness experiencing itself through the filter of me, through the filter of you. What would be the universe's need or desire to create so many different individuated perspectives of the one consciousness if there wasn't something brilliant about each one? Right? Let yourself really soften into and open up to this truth. How does that feel to hear that? It feels good, right? When you take that into your body and you pay attention, you give yourself the presence of this moment to pay attention to that, that I am a unique pinpoint of brilliance that is consciousness itself. I am consciousness experiencing itself through my unique perspective of brilliance. A shining light in a tapestry made up of many, many, many lights, all unique, all different, all individual little snowflakes. When you take that into your body and feel that, how does that feel? It feels good, right? And so when you soften into that idea, which is this first part of the platinum standard, there are three parts, doing what you're brilliant at, then of course, of course, you are brilliant at something, of course. The universe wastes nothing there is nothing random, there is nothing wasted, all energy is used. It all matters. All matter matters. You matter. You have something brilliant. You just don't believe 
that you have something brilliant. How does that feel? And going even further, you just don't believe yet that you have something brilliant to share. Or you have not yet come to this point of reckoning where you fully know and you feel it in your body as a truth for you, as a truth for you, that you are brilliant at this or that. So when do you let yourself off the hook? <laughs> or are you waiting for some sort of outside of you accommodation, validation, confirmation to tell you, oh, you know what? You are really brilliant. I got news for you. Do not wait for that. Don't keep yourself hanging on the line for that. You have to know it. You have to realize it. You have to recognize it. And you have to express it. It's all up to you. Are you getting that? Are you feeling me? Give me a yes or a heart if this makes sense. All right. Now, when you get to that point of recognizing what you're brilliant at and you own it, you own it. I'm a brilliant teacher. What I do here right now, inspiring the fuck out of all of you, I'm brilliant at this. I am. It's taken me a long time to get here. I am definitely, <laughs> I am definitely someone who is a hermit, a hermit. I keep to myself. I'm pretty introverted. Unless I'm around a group of people that I truly love and are familiar to me and I've known them for a long time, then I'm the life of the party and I'm wide open. But when I'm here with you, when I'm sharing things like this on a, on a free call, I am holding nothing back. I am giving you everything. This is stuff that I share in Lotus Throne Initiation, right here, right now, right, Jonte? This is stuff we talk about in Lotus Throne. So I'm holding nothing back. I am brilliant as a teacher because I give you everything I have to give. Look at my YouTube channel if you don't believe me. I don't need you to believe me. I know who I am. I know the truth of who I am. I know what I'm brilliant at. But if you don't believe me, you can go to my YouTube channel and look at all the things I've shared over the years. There's a lot there. There's good stuff there. There's master classes that are two hours long. There's incredible classes about um, all things ascension, spiritual discussions, as well as energy activations, guided journeys, etc. I've, I've given it all. When I teach classes or programs, regardless of the ticket price, I give you my all. I give you everything because that's what I love to do. I love this right here. So that brings us to number two, the second part of the th of three parts of the Platinum Standard. I love to teach, not because I'm brilliant at it, but that has a little to do with it. I love to teach because there is such an intimacy in talking and sharing about, discussing the things that really, really matter, the things that make up the deepest meaning of our human experience. That is why I love to teach. Yes, I'm really good at it. In fact, I'm brilliant at it. But I love it because of the intimacy of it. And even though I teach more group containers, I create intimacy in these containers. Some of them I have 80 people in. My Timelines Expanded Masterclass, there's 80 people in that class. It doesn't make it any less intimate, not the way I teach. Lotus Throne Initiation is another one. There's only eight women in there. Very intimate. We get to be each other's cheerleaders, right? With that level of intimacy. Because I, I crave deeper connection. I love deeper connection. And that rolls into the first two parts of my particular Platinum Standard. Doing what I'm brilliant at and doing what I love to do. This creates an alchemy. This creates a beautiful alchemy that very naturally, simply, elegantly leads into the third part. 
Your platinum standard is that which you are brilliant at, that which you love to do, and that which makes you money. Now, if you are fully all in, you're like, yes, Catherine, I'm on board with these first two parts completely, but how does it make me money? All right. Here's, here's a, a, a quick and dirty kind of tutorial on how money and ex exchange, the commerce of money, meaning going from one wallet to another, going from one person's pocket to another, exchanging from one person to another. That value gets converted in the New Earth paradigm through a higher essence of soul-to-soul -soul exchange. This is the quick and dirty version. I'm, I'm probably going to do a whole talk about money in the New Earth paradigm because it, it really is something we do need to talk about. That which makes you money, if you understand the first two parts of the platinum standard and you are all in with that, meaning you're not skimping on any of the things that I'm talking about here in these first two parts, that which you're brilliant at. You have to own it and you have to understand that your brilliance with that comes from a place of really owning your gifts because you understand that they are bestowed upon you by source itself. And gifts, when we have that realization of what gifts and abilities and skill sets and talents really are, yes, we've cultivated them. We may have even mastered them. And that's what lends to their brilliance. But we were given them, we were given knowledge of them by something much greater than who we are as our, our human expression. And chances are, and this has been my experience as an intuitive and an embodied conscious channel, is that when I work with people to really help to cultivate and help them master their gifts, these are gifts that have been with them for not just this lifetime, and not just for this timeline either. And some of the work that we've done in Timelines Expanded Masterclass, where we've taken guided journeys, especially with merging timelines, we can pull from other timelines we're already exploring the thing we want to master. We already are a master, in a sense, in this other timeline, and we can just kind of merge it and marry it into this now dominant timeline. That's possible for all of us. And many of us do it unconsciously, okay? When you have a very deep and involved dream, for instance, where it doesn't just feel like a dream, it doesn't just feel like, you know, the mind processing information from your day, which is what a lot of people say dreams are, which is, I think, very dismissive way of looking at dreams. Not to say that doesn't happen, but that's not true for every one of your dreams. In fact, some of your more profound dreams where you feel like you're having an ongoing experience and there's a linear experience in the dream, where one event takes place and then another and another and, so, and they, they lead up to each other, this is you viewing another timeline of you. You are glimpsing you in another timeline. And especially if information and wisdom gets downloaded through that dream experience that you use in this timeline, what you've done then is merged timelines. And a lot of us don't have the presence of mind to understand that process or be able to call it that or label it that, but that's what's going on. <laughs> And a lot of us do it unconsciously, but you can learn to do this consciously. And it's really fun, by the way. So when you are owning those gifts and you can fully recognize what you're brilliant at, it is this admission. I admit. I understand. I see now that this doesn't just come from me and it's bigger than me. In other words, when you're sharing what you're brilliant at, you're working with the highest level of your gifts, you understand that those gifts are not just here to benefit you. The gift doesn't stop with you. The gift was given, or gifts plural were given, because you were meant to share them. And everything about moving into unity consciousness is about taking the best of what we've got and giving it freely, sharing it. 
I'm not saying exist in servitude and give all your good stuff away for free. That's not what I'm talking about. Absolutely own your gifts. Absolutely charge money for what your gifts are and how you share them with other people. But when you do that, hold back nothing. Because that's really, truly the nature of unity consciousness. And that is this agreement, this handshake with source, if you want to call it that. Like, I see that these gifts are bigger than me because they come from you. Thank you, source. So I'll return the favor. I'll match that frequency by making sure I share these far and wide. Instead of holding them back and hoarding them and keeping them all to yourself. That's old paradigm. It doesn't serve the collective. It doesn't serve the, the ethics and principles of unity consciousness. I've been having these dreams more often. Me too, Jante. Especially right now at this end of the year. And so the second part, doing what you love. When you do anything and you love it, doesn't it feel easy? Doesn't it feel simple? Doesn't it feel quite elegant and buoyant and light and fresh? And doesn't it fill your heart with joy? Doesn't it make you feel expanded? Doesn't it make you feel like you can do anything? So think about the alchemy of those first two parts of the Platinum Standard. Doing what you're brilliant at and doing what you love. Combine those two. You are in the essence of calling forth everything that supports you. And yes, it's money, because that's how we, we you know, mark and measure the exchange of value in this world. Right? I'll give you something really valuable and you give me something really valuable in return, right? It's just an energetic exchange of mutually agreed upon value. It is an elegant alchemy, absolutely, Jante. And so when you're doing that, you are in the frequency of guess what? Prosperity, abundance, never ending support, incredible amounts of nourishment, self nurturing, because you are giving yourself the best of what you've got, allowing yourself to experience the resonance of, of sharing from that level of your brilliance and doing what you love. And it is blessing and gifting the lives of others, increasing the value they experience in their lives. It creates a ripple effect because when you do that and you share from that place, everybody wants what you've got. How could they not? It's contagious, it's infectious, it's beautiful. Everybody wants some of that. Everybody wants some. One of my favorite Van Halen songs. <laughs> Does this make sense? And so where we would strategize and try to be clever about how to rise above the competition, old paradigm, we're done with that. We're done. And it feels really clunky. Let's just be honest. And it's exhausting because we're always in this energy of chasing and seeking. Yes? You're trying to get those people enrolled and you're trying to sell this course and sell this program and this master class or this session or this group course or program and it it, it kind of fills you with dread to have to go on face place and you know try to drum up attention and do the things and it feels clunky and it feels heavy and it, it's exhausting it's draining it doesn't feel brilliant you don't love it so where maybe everyone else hasn't caught on yet and they're still trying to strategize and be clever, they're working from ego. In spirit-led visionary work, you are working with the exact opposite energy that creates momentum in spirit-led visionary work and livelihood. I physically can't do it either. It, it feels really exhausting. And so, you know, when I share, my, my energy is in the right place before I turn on my camera, 
before anyone can tune into the vibration of my words or what's between my words. I want to be in my brilliance. Sometimes it takes me a minute to get there and that's okay. I don't always show up on time. Everyone who is in my orbit can attest to that. But I, I want to be the best of who I am and give you the best of what I've got when I show up live. So maybe I'm 10 minutes late, maybe I'm a half hour late. But when I'm on, I'm on and I'm fully there. And that's part of my commitment to service, which is also what I love. Part of my brilliance as well, being of a high level of service. Because that's a gift. And it'll feel like servitude if I feel like I'm chasing something. It'll feel like servitude um, if it feels like I have to give you everything from a place where I don't want to give. I, I, I don't have any more to give, but I'll pretend that I do. So maybe you'll like me, maybe you'll approve of me, maybe you'll believe in me and then maybe buy for me versus I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up as all of me. I'm going to give you the best of what I got. I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you everything. Hold nothing back. This is who I am. I might drop some F-bombs here and there, but I, I'm me. I got to do me. I got to be me. I'm weird. I laugh at stupid stuff. I maybe have a little dark sense of humor sometimes. I have a, a potty mouth. I got, um, you know, weird hair. <laughs> I, I cut my own hair today. Shh. But I'm going to be me because that's part of my brilliance. And that's my, that's my unique spark of brilliance and spark of light. And if I didn't love me, I wouldn't be able to show up and do that. I would try to hide it. I would wear a mask. I would be inauthentic. I wouldn't be genuine. But this platinum standard that I'm talking about that I adopted and now I share and I teach it, I'm not available for anything less. Once I've been able to, you know, really receive this alchemy and kind of marinate and languish in this energy and really allow it to expand and blossom and bloom around me and be able to sit in the energy of my unique platinum standard and yours is unique too. I don't want to feel anything less than that. I can't. I, I can't. I can't go back to trying to strategize and be clever and do my work from ego. I, I, I can't do it. I won't do it. I'm not available for it. And it does take a great deal of trust because that also means that if I'm not available for anything less, then I have to take this high-powered lens now, this platinum standard, and shine it on every area of my life and my livelihood what I'm doing in my everyday daily life and also what I'm doing every day in my business. What does not match this standard? Well, it's got to go. Because if I'm performing some part of what I do, what I teach, what I share that doesn't match this frequency of the platinum standard, then in my eyes, in my estimation, it's not authentic. It's not in integrity. It's a mismatch. It's lesser than. And so I won't do it. And so let's get down to brass tacks here. What does this really look like for those of us who are spirit-led visionary women who want to get on board with this platinum standard and, and create this ethic and standard for themselves? Well, it looks like... I'll give you an example. And then I'm going to use as an example, I'm going to use an example from someone who was in Lotus Throne as well. So when I started shining this high powered lens on everything I've been doing and offering and sharing, it feels so clunky that I physically can't do it, Jante says. Absolutely. It just, it's just like, ew, Ugh. <laughs> I don't want to do it. So when I really started looking at my life and my business through this high powered lens and this standard and saying to myself very honestly, well, if I'm not available for anything less than that, then I'm going to have to get very honest with myself about what I'm doing, what I'm offering. 
And so those of you who have been in my community, in my orbit for a while, you know that I'm a prolific content creator. That is part of my brilliance, and I, I fully own that. I am a prolific content creator. I've written three books. I have, at last count, especially when I did inventory in my Member Vault Academy of Programs, this is my academy of all of my online programs, I got rid of more than half of what was in there. Do I make money from all those things? I sure do. I sure have made money from all those things. But do I love teaching them anymore? Some of them, I had to be very honest, no, I don't love teaching them anymore. Am I brilliant at teaching them? I'm, go I'm good at teaching those things. I'm very good, very adept at teaching those things. They came from me, they came through me, is a better way to say it. Because all of my courses, programs, books, they are channeled through me, not from me necessarily. Am I good at teaching them? Yeah. Do I love them? Mm -hmm. Do they make me money? Yeah, sure. Doesn't measure up though. I'm absolutely brilliant at teaching Lotus Throne Initiation. And I love it. I love it so much. It is a breath of fresh air. It is different than anything I've ever taught. It is the culmination of 20 years plus of gleaned wisdom and experience, of being in the spiritual marketplace, of being a hands-on energy healer and a distant energy healing or a healer, of being a, a, a being an author, a speaker. It's the culmination of all those things. But it's not all those things in there. It is a very stripped down, down to fundamental, simple, and elegant solution-based fundamentals that create a foundation that allows us to build up who we are in our life and livelihood in New Earth. That's brilliant, and I love it. I love it so much. I don't understand why I haven't filled this program yet. And it makes me money, <laughs> okay? And I refuse to, even though I could take out ads, I could create a funnel, I could, you know, do some marketing tactics, you know, put somebody in a funnel and give a freebie and, and do the thing. Old and clunky. I'm not saying for any of you who still love to do that, some of you really love that kind of marketing and you, you, you love funnels and you love putting people into different email lists and whatnot. I don't love it and I'm not brilliant at it, and I don't wanna do it. Does it make me money? Yeah, sure. It could obviously make me money, but it feels old and clunky, and it doesn't fit with my platinum standard, so I don't do it. Now, it's going to take for you to institute your own platinum standard, certainly for me to institute my own platinum standard, it takes a great deal of trust. It takes a great deal of faith. Is this really gonna work? If I, if I look at everything and I set everything in my life to this platinum standard and say I'm not available for anything less, that means you're gonna be, that means you're going to be decluttering a lot of things. But here's, here's the thing. When you get brave and courageous and start to do that and you start to see the energy opening up, that decluttering is also an energetic exchange of value. The decluttering, the letting go, the release, allows you to be in a period of renewal so that you can create and have the energy and the funding and the fuel to create what does match your platinum standard. It takes trust, it takes courage, it takes faith. And the only way to do that is to actually do it. So I got rid of more than half of what I was teaching and sharing in my online member vault. Some of the things that I was looking at offering this year in 2023, nope, put them on the back burner, put the kibosh on them because they don't meet this platinum standard for me. Could they make me money? Yeah. Yeah, there's stuff that they're like kind of a redux version of things that I offered before. It might be new to some people, it's not new to me, but it doesn't light me up. I'm not brilliant at it. I'm good at it. I'm good at sharing this stuff. 
Um, is it going to make me money? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't love it. Am I absolutely in love with these things? No. Nope. And when you make this pact, this agreement with yourself, you open up your capacity to receive. That's the exchange of value. Fleecing yourself of what doesn't match the platinum standard and having the trust and the courage to do that only and ever increases your capacity to receive that which does meet the platinum standard. That is how Lotus Throne Initiation came in. I created the capacity to receive it. And it was through a, a period of pretty colossal surrender. <laughs> pretty colossal surrender. It was from a place of like, I, I, I give up, I give up. I, I, I'm done. I'm done trying to strategize. I'm done trying to lead my business from ego. I'm done trying to be clever. I'm done, you know, doing things that make me competitive. Even though in my mind I'm saying I'm not being competitive. I was being competitive. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. It, it doesn't feel right. It feels clunky. It feels old. It doesn't match. And here's the other thing about the platinum standard. The reason why this is such an elegant and simple solution for you when looking at how to reframe your life and livelihood in the new earth paradigm, the reason why this is such a simple and elegant solution for you is because many of us don't realize something very profound. You have already shifted frequencies. You've already moved into a higher frequency of you. You have. And that's why certain things in your life and livelihood feel so clunky. They, they feel like, like a, a used box <laughs> of Crayola crayons where they're, all the crayons are worn down to a nub. You remember that old coveted 64 box of crayons that I always wanted when I was a little kid. I finally got them <laughs> for Christmas one year. But I used my crayons so much they got down to these little nubs, right? Especially certain colors. It's like that versus drawing an AI where it's light and it's, it's led by energy. There's, it, it's like Tinker Toys or Lincoln Logs versus, um, you know, looking at something that's like a, an AI video game and playing something like that. It's like working in the new earth paradigm in this way and aligning with the frequency of, of who you already are and then employing the platinum standard. It's like this beautiful marriage of our human and our soul. Because your, your soul has already integrated the lessons and processed and downloaded the wisdom of you being in this next highest frequency expression of you but it's your human that's still trying to play catch up. And your human is not gonna be able to play catch up if it's still acting like who you were a year ago, two years ago, maybe even five weeks ago. And so it's gonna take some trust. You're going to have to be open and honest with yourself. You're not gonna be able to bypass and simply push past things that like, yeah, I don't feel great about this, but I'm gonna put it out there because I know it's gonna make me money. And yeah, it'll serve some people, but I really gotta make some money now. And here's, here's yet another thing. Not only are you already in this higher frequency version of you, and that's why maybe your business feels so clunky because some things have to go. They just don't match the frequency of who you are now, period, the end. But also we've got to lose this old earth paradigm of, and I still see this so much in the spiritual marketplace and I see, I see it and I hear it. I feel it in the energy behind people's words, behind their marketing words or their overexposed marketing terms that they use to promote a post or, or even share value about their work. And I can feel it and see it every time. This energy of people using their business 
to try to compensate for where they feel unworthy, for where they feel invisible, for where they feel unwanted, for where they feel impoverished in mind, consciousness, finances. You cannot pay any lip service and be in integrity with saying, I'm doing my work in the new earth paradigm, but then still trying to sell a course, sell a program, even offer a freebie for Christ's sake, and do it from a place of need and making it about you. And having this business somehow be this way that if you get the clients, if you if have the people sign up for the freebie, if the ladies sign up for the $5,000 course you're offering, that in some way, shape, or form, this is compensating for where you don't feel you measure up. Your business is not a tool or a vehicle for that. And if you're doing that, please be honest with yourself and take a good hard look at what you're doing and then stop, <laughs> please stop because it's polluting your energy and it's polluting the marketplace. I said what I said, and I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. And I know that there are a lot of you who are very energetically savvy as well, and you see it too. And that's why you don't sign up for that freebie or that course or that program, because it's just like the energy on it is just so full of need. And it's, a, it's about that person. It's not about the service of the business. It's not about the trajectory you can take those clients on that propels them into the stratosphere of success or achievement or whatever else. Got a lovely little deer in my front yard. Jante says, I've recently seen someone trying to teach people to use that paradigm. Oof, ouch, <laughs> ouch. I can't believe this is still making the rounds, but whatever, you know, as I said before, and I truly, I do truly own up to this. There's room for everything in the spiritual marketplace. And at the end of the day, we got to do what's right for us, what suits us best. But if you're offering a business that you say is of service, then you also have to make it bigger than you. And you have to make it about service to those individuals who are you know, taking their time and energy and money to be part of your community. That means something. It has to be bigger than you. Cookie cutter. Absolutely, Dina. And it's easy, right? People think that it's easy to go that route until it isn't. Because I will tell you, it will catch up to you. It will catch up to you. And people are more energetically savvy than they've ever been on this planet. And so more and more people will begin to see it. There may be people who will never see it and that's fine. But those aren't the people that I work with. And those aren't the people that you want to work with. I want to work with people who know that I'm giving the absolute best value, that I show up with everything intact, everything to give, everything to offer, and I hold nothing back. Because I do genuinely care. I, I care about the unity consciousness trajectory and timeline of this planet. I want everybody to scale and evolve and grow. I don't think that that's just part of the purview of the coaching elite. Um, I, I want scaling and evolution and growth and incremental successes over time, consistently over time to be available for everyone. And I teach from that place and I give and share from that place because it's fucking bigger than me. And even though, yes, I, I, I'm still working out some stuff of unworthiness, of feeling unwanted, of feeling even invisible, um, I don't let it enter into my work. That has a, that has a place for, for me to deal with with my own shadow, my own shadow work and shadow time that I make a priority to deal with this stuff and work with this stuff. And it's an ongoing process for all of us. And those who are really here to be of service on this planet, it's an ongoing process that doesn't end. It's not going to end. There's just different levels and layers of it. And that's okay. Because we can learn to be with that ebb and flow. And so I don't, I don't teach courses or create content or work on manifesting my goals on those ebb days. Those ebb days, and I did a talk about this very recently, 
they're reserved for me to be in shadow time. They're reserved for me to be sad or angry or depressed or disappointed or, you know, to cry my eyes out and do a big ugly cry or do those things. But those are not the days to work on my goals. And then there's the flow days, like today, where I'm on top of the world. I got up, I had money in my account that I woke up to. Not that, you know, I'm letting that externally dictate how I feel, but it just that's how my day started. And that's good. And I felt you know, a beautiful wave of information coming through that I brought in that's going to go into my transpersonal ascension attunement next week when we talk about solar feminine time and we bring in the transmission of solar feminine time and that felt really good. And I got up and I took my doggy outside and it was a little warmer today. We played ball in the backyard and then I went shopping and I went to the grocery store and I had a really nice exchange with the lady in the grocery store and then I came home and I put all this delicious food away in the fridge and I'm like, ah, oh, gratitude. I have all this beautiful food in the fridge that I can prepare for my family. And then, oh, I get to talk to you guys and be of service. That's a flow day. That's a good day. This is a day where you build momentum. You take this energy and fund it towards creating momentum and consistency at what you're creating, what you're manifesting, right? There's room for it all. There's room for it all. So... I hope this helps. I think that's all I wanted to say. That is a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. I just want to see how long I've been talking here. Okay. I've been talking a while. An hour. So that's a good time to cut it off. So I've talked a few times about Lotus Throne initiation in here. This is where we really kind of hunker down and I help you with establishing your own unique platinum standard. Today is a flow day for me too. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it's going to come in and out. You know, here's the thing. You're never not you. And you're never being shown anything you can't handle because how are you not you? What you're being shown is, is you. It's a reflection of you. So when you say, I can't handle this, that's like saying, I can't handle me. Of course you can. Of course you can. It's just an ebb day. It's a day to be sad. It's a day to be angry. It's a day to be frustrated. It's a, it's a day to be mad at the world or whatever it needs to do. Feel the feels and let yourself have it. Take a nap, you know, make yourself something, some really nourishing comfort food and just say, you know what, today's not the day to work on this stuff because I'm going to push and I'm going to try to be, you know, clever and I'm going to try to strategize and I'm going to do this from a place of ego. So I don't use my ebb days for that. On the momentum and uh, the days where I feel momentum and flow, those are the days that I build, you know, out my consistent or build out some consistency in my goals, my ambitions, my creations, my manifestations. I use that energy to fund it because I feel I'm in the wholeness of who I am. I'm not an ego. I'm in my source projection. I'm in my divine witness energy. And so we deepen into this in Lotus Throne Initiation. We deepen into helping you create your own platinum standard. We move into a place of really stripping down and slowing down and savoring what is right in front of you. So instead of doing all the things, and if you feel like you're someone who's doing this in your business, I highly recommend Lotus Throne Initiation for you because we slow everything down. We bring things back to basics. We fleece ourselves and strip down and dissolve away the things that do not lend themselves to our platinum standard and do not align with the frequency that you're already inhabiting, that you've already shifted into. So if anything, we reveal more of that because so it becomes more obvious to you. And then we savor into what is next. One of the things that I'm most proud of not only of myself, but of the women in Lotus Throne Initiation, is that we're only in ever in this program, nine weeks together, we're only in ever working with the next step. I'm not getting you to strategize and do a five-year plan. Nope. I'm not getting you to try to be clever and build something out. How do you want your life to look a year from now? None of that matters. It's not real. It's all a hallucination anyway. We are not here to lead New Earth Visionary Business by strategizing and being clever. We are here to revolutionize. That means doing things differently. 
and being able to adopt the emotional intelligence and the mental resilience to put something else out there that feels different, looks different, sounds different, and doesn't resemble anything else currently out there, and to do it from a place of faith and do it from a place of courage and trust because it matches your platinum standard. If it matches your platinum standard, you cannot fail. You're going to have to trust me on that. But uh, you're going to have to trust yourself. And this is a time to rise up and trust yourself in ways that you have not before. And if you want to be here for the long game, if you want to adopt staying power, it is really about deepening into this place of the platinum standard, rising up and revolutionizing through that. Aligning who you are and your business and livelihood with the frequency you're already inhabiting and with this platinum standard. I'm very excited about this program and we start November 28th. We have two calls a week. We do activation on the Monday call and the Friday call is accountability. But I'm only never asking you to be with the next step. We work week to week because that's all that's right in front of us. And I never ask you to look too far forward and far ahead because that doesn't matter anyway. It's all hallucination, it's illusory. You can only and ever be with and work with what is right in front of you anyway. And we need to retrain ourselves because we have a habit of doing otherwise, of funneling our energy towards the past and lamenting it or wishing we were different or the way it was back then, or funneling our energy towards the future, which does not exist. It's complete hallucination. All we ever have to work with and the space we have to create in is the now, the present moment. All else is just phantoms and ghosts. There is an opportunity to work with me if this is not for you at this time. If you're not really sure what your gifts are, that's okay. We can still work with this in Lotus Throne because you have some brilliance in you and I can help you find it. I can help you recognize it. Chances are you already know. Most of the women I work with already know. They just don't believe it. They don't trust it. And we get to work on that in here. So Lotus Throne, it's a nine week container. Um, there's three different payment options, pay in full, split payment, or a four, um, I think a three or four payment option, I can't remember. So there's that. And we start November 28th and we go for nine weeks. This allows you to move into 2023. You hit the ground running in 2023. Instead of starting cold, you know, on January 7th in some program, let's start doing this now. We work around the holidays. Um, and don't worry, there's going to be a bye week around Christmas, but we're going we're gonna to do this because we have to make this a priority. We have to make our rising up and meeting the platinum standard in our life and livelihoods a priority. There is also the Momentum of Flow program where we talk about the ebb and the flow days. These are two powerful coaching calls a month. And this is being offered from a place of deep service and commitment to what I do it is a high value coaching container without the high ticket price because I feel that there's a lot of women being left out in the cold right now. I see this constant evolution towards scaling and scaling the business. So, you know, people who are offering these coaching programs are ever and always and consistently offering to a smaller portion of women with deeper wallets. This is leaving so many women right now and men out in the cold. And I, I really feel fiercely adamant about not being one of those people. I still offer high ticket things. I receive high ticket coaching. I'm not poo-pooing it at all, but I'm not saying that that is the end all be all of impact. I think we've lost the thread in the narrative of what impact and service is. And I wanna revolutionize that. I don't strategize. I'm not trying to be clever. I'm not trying to outsell or compete. I'm revolutionizing. And those people who resonate with that will naturally be drawn to me. I'll magnetize them to me, <laughs> okay? Because I walk the talk and this is who I am. And so those are your options to work with me. Um, I have a couple other options on offer. Tomorrow's the last day to get everything that I've taught in my Tao of the Divine Disruptor mentorship. 
This was a membership program I started in April. Um, all the programs and courses in there, over 26 weeks worth of um, teachings and some very powerful programs in there, channeling benevolent energy, psychic protection masterclass, living intuitively levels one and two, and unplug. Those are part of that. It's more than half off all of this, and you get a year membership in the Tao of the Divine Disruptor Facebook group, so you can ask questions in there. Take your time to learn all this stuff throughout 2023, and that is half off of that. That ends tomorrow. Um, and then the Transpersonal Ascension Attunement. That is coming up next week. When you join with half off uh, Tao of the Divine Mentorship, you get access to Transpersonal Ascension Attunement, which is going to be live if you just join Transpersonal Ascension Attunement, it's just the Zoom calls. It's not the group um, access because it is part of the Tao of Divine Disruptor. So thanks for your attention, everyone. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. I love you. I know that growth and incremental evolution and consistent success over time is yours for the taking. I believe it. I know it. It's time for you to rise up and step up and know it. Love and peace.